Hi everyone. Today let us discuss about acoustic reflex or stapedial reflex. It is an important topic. I am Dr. Yan Harish Kumar, ENT surgeon. So the principle on which this uh, test or this reflex is based on is that if a loud sound greater than 70 to 100 decibels above the threshold of hearing of a particular ear is given to uh, the sound of 70 to 100 decibels is given to a particular ear then it causes contraction on the right side on the side in which uh, the uh, sound is given also on the other side that is you are going to get a sound you are going to get a contraction of the stapedius muscle on the ipsilateral side and the contralateral side okay it causes bilateral contraction of the stapedial muscles and this contraction can be detected by tympanometry tympanometry we already saw that in the last uh, presentation in which we place a probe with three channels okay in which one of the probes uh, is the function is to increase or decrease the pressure in with the help of air pump another one is to send a sound the other one is to uh, pick up the sound the mic okay so that is the principle of tympanometry we using this this is also one of the uh, tests that you can do with the tympanometry so the basis of the test is that if you give a sound 70 to 100 decibels above the hearing threshold to one ear it causes bilateral contraction of the stapedius muscle stapedius muscle so the both muscles will contract and this can be picked up with tympanometry it's a very useful test as we will discuss so as i said tone can tone is delivered to one ear and it can be picked up in the same ear and also in the contralateral ear the important thing and the good thing about this test is it's an objective test the patient's response has got no uh, no bearing on the result of this test so you are going to get the result of the test with or without the patient's cooperation okay so what is the reflex arc where what where the where all there is a sound travel uh, what are the uh, why and how does the uh, stapedius muscle contract so suppose you send a sound to one ear say this is the right ear which is 70 to 100 decibels above the hearing threshold now this is the most important point the sound if it's a normal sound you are not going to get a stapedius muscle contraction why does the stapedius muscle contract stapedius muscle contracts to prevent loud sounds sudden loud sounds going into the cochlea if sudden loud sounds go into the cochlea then the cochlear hair cells will get damaged okay so to prevent that from happening the stapedius muscle contracts and also the tensor tympani also contract so these two will give some level of protection to the cochlea against loud sound so when you send a loud sound 70 to 100 decibels above the hearing threshold of the patient then that that sound will travel through the os through the tympanic membrane ossicles and will uh, reach the cochlea and that sound as we know will go through the auditory nerve eighth nerve to the cochlear nucleus to the ventral cochlear nucleus or the cochlear nucleus from there the sound will travel to the superior olivary complex okay from there the sound will travel to the superior olivary complex the, the the connection is then given to the facial nerve motor nucleus of the facial nerve and that sound will travel through the facial nerve and that facial nerve branch will con cause contraction of the of the stapedius muscle on the right side now what have what is the opposite side how does it happen the same thing uh, the sound is presented to the ear the uh, the sound is converted from the sound energy to the electrical energy in the cochlea and that goes to the cochlear nerve and to the ipsilateral the same side superior olivary complex that sound uh, that information is passed on to the contralateral superior olivary complex which then transmits that information to the contralateral facial nerve nucleus and the contralateral facial nerve will take the information to the stapedius muscle on the other side the contralateral or the other side so this is how the reflex arc works so what are the components of the reflex arc the cochlear nerve the eighth nerve the cochlear nucleus the superior olivary complex the motor nucleus of the facial nerve and the facial nerve okay so uh, what is the afferent nerve afferent is one which takes the information to the central nervous system efferent is the 
nerve which takes the information from the central nervous system to the part that is uh, that is going to contract or that is going to work okay so the afferent is the eighth nerve or the auditory nerve as we have seen here the afferent is the eighth nerve the information is passing through the afferent nerve the efferent the one that is causing contraction is the facial nerve on the on the on the ipsilateral side and the facial nerve on the contralateral side okay so now you got it what is the afferent nerve and what is the efferent nerve okay so when you present a loud sound okay and there is stapedial reflex on one, on the both sides it means that the afferent is working normally the efferent is working normally and all the connections in the central nervous system are functioning normally so this is the information that we are getting once we get the uh, the the contraction when we give a loud sound it means all the systems that is the auditory nerve the facial nerve and the central connection that is the cochlear nerve superior olivary complex or complex and the motor nerve are functioning properly suppose suppose there is a problem with the uh, with the uh, afferent nerve afferent nerve means the one that takes information suppose there is some lesion or suppose there is a uh, nerve uh, damage to the auditory nerve what happens you present a loud sound to the uh, to the uh, to the tympanic membrane to the ear to the and that passes to the tympanic membrane and the ossicles the cochlea is going to change that sound uh, from the sound energy to electrical energy but there will be no passage of information to the central nervous system so what happens the ipsilateral and the contralateral uh, stapedius muscle will not contract okay so the when in afferent nerve palsy both sides of the stapedius muscle will not contract so that's how we come to know that there is an afferent nerve palsy in afferent nerve palsy stapedial reflex is absent the stapedius will not contract on both sides ipsilateral and contralateral now let us see the other scenario other situation okay in that is let us say the right side uh, right side uh, uh, efferent nerve that is the uh, facial nerve has got damaged okay whether it is bell's palsy or whether it is uh, ipsila what is it called uh, iatrogenic uh, facial nerve palsy or because of traumatic uh, nerve injury the ipsilateral uh, facial nerve has got damaged so what happens you send a loud sound to through the tympanic membrane to the ossicles the cochlea will convert the sound energy electrical energy and the information is passing to the cochlear nucleus to the superior olivary nucleus and to the uh, ipsilateral motor nerve nucleus but there is the information will not be passing to the ipsilateral to the ipsilateral uh, stapedius muscle but the uh, there is the opposite uh, facial nerve is intact the opposite superior olivary complex of opposite uh, motor nucleus of the facial nerve will be able to transmit the information and the opposite uh, stapedius nerve uh, will uh, stapedius muscle will contract so in efferent nerve palsy only that sided stapedius muscle will not contract the contralateral stapedius muscle will contract okay so in efferent nerve palsy stapedial reflex is absent only on the side of the lesion only on the side of the lesion you will have a uh, the the stapedius will not contract okay the other side will be able to contract hope i am clear so now what is the clinical significance this is the beauty of this test what are there are, it is having so many applications what is the clinical significance of a stapedial reflex this can be used as a screening tool to test hearing in infants and young children so if you are going to give a sound loud sound to one ear and uh, you can pick up the sound from both the ears it means that basically the afferent nerve that is the eighth nerve the central connections that is the cochlear nucleus superior olivary nucleus motor nucleus of the facial nerve and the facial nerve is intact the entire reflex arc is intact and the uh, opposite superior olivary nucleus superior olivary nucleus uh, facial nerve and the efferent that is the seventh nerve on the other side is also intact so the entire thing is intact you will get that information and it's an objective test you do not have to depend on the person to give the response so because in young children uh, and uh, thing and uh, infants we are having a doubt that the suppose a patient comes to you uh, he is a 3 year old child or a 2 year old child and uh, he, they say that the patient is not developing speech properly he is not able to talk his development of speech he is not able to say mama daddy and all that so uh, you will get a doubt okay is his hearing normal or not 
in such cases we usually go for bera which is the final test but as a screening tool suppose we have to screen 100 uh, children uh, in a very short time screening you have to do it fast you cannot take a long time so screening tool uh, should be like it is very easy to perform and you should be getting the result immediately and you can do uh, it in a very short period of time so that can be used as a screening tool so this is a very good screening tool to screen a lot of uh, infants and young children to see whether they are uh, having any hearing problem or not to find malingerers uh, this is something that is commonly seen uh, uh, in the government setup where uh, a person is going to come and say i can't hear on both sides and whatever you talk he will he will not be he will not be replying if you do a pure audiometry you cannot get in response you will say i am not able to hear anything okay but but if you do a stepedial reflex or the acoustic reflex on this patient and his stepedial muscle contracts it means that he is a malingerer he is feening he is saying he is not a dumb uh, deaf person but he is uh, lying that he is a deaf person to get what uh because they will get uh, this uh, pension and all that if they are a deaf person so they will try to act as if they are deaf but they are if they are not deaf to find out how to find out you can you how how howsoever loud you may shout at the patient patient will not reply pure tone audiometry you have to send a tone to the ear and the patient says i can't hear but if you can do a uh, stepedial reflex in this patient and if the stepedial muscle contracts it means he is a malingerer if the stepedial muscle doesn't contract yes his auditory nerve is damaged okay or his cochlea is damaged or one of the central pathways is damaged something is damaged so he is not getting a uh, getting the stepedial reflex okay to detect cochlear pathology the underlying principle of this test is a uh, patients with cochlear pathology say meniere's disease uh, they can hear low uh, also presbycusis presbycusis also have this kind of a problem where low intensity sounds or the low amplitude low intensity sounds they cannot hear but uh, a little bit louder sounds it becomes very painful to them this this phenomenon is called recruitment in the in the subsequent uh, uh, presentations we are going to talk in detail about recruitment but here i am going to just Uh, mention it because in stepedial reflex, uh, if you are pro- the stepedial reflex, when you should you get it? You should get it at seventy to hundred decibels. But if you are able to get stepedial reflex at a lower lower amplitude, suppose forty to sixty decibels, then it means that the patient is having recruitment, and this type of hearing loss is a cochlear type of hearing loss. So usually we will get uh, confused between a tone decay and recruitment. so i thought we'll have a mnemonic for this rc recruitment is seen in cochlear type of hearing loss rc remote control so you can rem- remember remote control remote control rc recruitment recruitment is an abnormal growth of loudness where low intensity sounds are not heard but a higher intensity sounds become too un- unbearable and painful okay it is seen in cochlear type of hearing loss recruitment is seen in cochlear type of hearing loss so if you are able to get the stepedial reflex at a lower intensity say 40 decibels or 60 decibels instead of the usual 70 to 100 decibels it indicates cochlear pathology for example meniere's disease which is nothing but endolymphatic hydrops the entire thing starts getting swollen because endolymph is not able to go away uh, that uh, circulation system has got damaged either it is overproduction or under absorption okay meniere's disease presbycusis also there is damage to the cochlea okay so in cochlear type of hearing loss you can you can find out okay there is another thing called the tone decay acoustic reflex tone decay normal people if you give a sustained tone of 500 to 10 500 to 1000 hertz at 10 decibels above the acoustic reflex threshold they should be able to hear it for the entire uh, period of 10 seconds but if that amplitude if you saying i am um, you are giving the same sound but then it falls off after 10 seconds uh, that is the the nerve is getting fatigued the nerve is not able to function through the entire period then then that is called tone decay the tone decay is characteristic of retrocochlear type of hearing loss retrocochlear type of hearing loss so you can remember it by tr tr is like uh, uh, you can say uh, temporary registration temporary registration tr tr is temporary registration rc is uh, recruitment is in cochlear type of hearing loss tone decay is seen in retrocochlear type of hearing loss so this is nothing but uh, uh, the nerve is getting fatigued 
so he is not able to hear the sound for the entire duration so he stops hearing the sound earlier suppose you give a that's the example that is given 500 to 1000 hertz at 10 decibels above the hearing threshold you should ask the patient can you hear it for the entire period or you can you cannot hear it for the entire period okay uh, for 10 seconds becomes a reflex amplitude to 50 percent so this is like uh, you're not asking the patient the the stapedius muscle contraction is falling down to 50 percent the the capacity of the uh, the the stapedius to contract the the contraction of the stapedius muscle is coming down by 50 percent and this also can be recorded by tympanometry so tympanometry is able to detect that the, the stapedius is contracting but it is, it is able to contract only for half of the time or it is not able to contract for the entire duration of the sound then it brings the reflex amplitude to 50% so this is also an objective test you are not asking the patient but basically you are able to measure the contraction of the stapedius muscle so if it is not able to contract it for the entire length of the time then it means that the tone decay that is this nerve is getting fatigued or stapedius muscle is getting fatigued so this will happen in uh, retrocochlear type of hearing loss for example acoustic neuroma so here you have this example here the, this is the external artery canal this is the middle ear this is the cochlea so till here we call we say it's a cochlea till here it is a conductive type of hearing loss beyond it it is a retrocochlear type of hearing loss you can see there is a uh, acoustic neuroma growth at the uh, cerebellum pontine angle at the CP angle there is a, a growth of the acoustic neuroma and this will cause uh, this is what the where is the problem the problem is in the auditory nerve that is in the retrocochlear part of the hearing pathway so in such patients because the nerve is getting affected it is called you are going to have what is called nerve fatigue so you are going to get epidial decay stapedial decay or stapedial fatigue okay so uh, one more thing is only a nerve can undergo fatigue and not the uh, only a nerve can undergo fatigue and not the cochlea the cochlea does not undergo fatigue so fatigue is only seen in nerve nerve means uh, it is a auditory nerve that is a eighth nerve that is retrocochlear type of hearing loss like that also you can try to remember okay so one more is uh, lesions of stapedial nerve this is also very important uh, from the neat PG also they may ask you quite uh, confusing questions in this so suppose a patient is coming to you with facial nerve palsy so the patient is already having facial nerve palsy if the stapedial reflex is present it means that suppose this is the facial nerve okay this is the facial nerve and here is the nerve to stapedius here is the nerve to stapedius if the stapedius reflex is present it means the uh, sorry it means that it means that there, there is a lesion after the nerve to the stapedius obviously right so if uh, the stapedi if you give a sound to the ear and the stapedius is contracting it means that the nerve is able to transmit till the nerve to the stapedius so the lesion has to be after the nerve to the stapedius okay suppose uh, this patient is having a lesion before the nerve to the stapedius but the lesion of the facial nerve before the nerve to the stapedius then the stapedial reflex will not be present when the stapedius reflex is not be present loud sounds even a normal sound as heard as loud and painful this is called hyperacusis okay this is called hyperacusis okay so in facial nerve palsy if the stapedius reflex is present it means that the lesion is after the nerve to the stapedius if the stapedius muscle is not contracting if the stapedius reflex is absent it means that the lesion is before the nerve to the stapedius i think it is straightforward okay so uh, before the nerve before lesion before the nerve to the stapedius no stapedial reflex after the nerve to the stapedius stapedius reflex will be present and if the if the stapedius is not able to contract be in, in lesions before the nerve to the stapedius normal sounds will be heard as loud and painful this is called hyperacusis okay now coming to the last one uh, clinical significance brainstem lesions if ipsilateral if ipsilateral uh, reflex arc is working but the contralateral reflex arc is not working it means that the lesion is somewhere in the 
interconnections that is in the in the interconnection between the superior olivary nucleus of the right side and the left side there is some problem in the middle in the, in the brain stem then uh, if uh, then such patients you can suspect that there is some brain stem lesion which is preventing the information from being passed from the one side to the other side okay so the, the in the area of the crossed pathways of the brain stem somewhere in the middle of the brain stem you are expecting that there is a problem so in if there is a uh, stapedius reflex is present on the ipsilateral side the side in which you are giving the sound but on the other side there is no stapedius reflex it means that there is some problem in the crossed interconnections in the brain stem crossed pathways in the brain stem okay so thank you thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and share if you find the content useful thank you